மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க தேங்க் யூ Okay, moving on. Um this next one I would hope that many experienced London players have seen before. If you haven't seen this one before, I'll be very happy to share it with you because it's it's probably one of the most famous tactics in the London. And I want to start with the opening because we're going to see a very similar line to the game I showed in the first lesson uh with the game between Carlson and Bosiocic. Um and as we'll see the uh uh the players follow pretty much the same setup white doing the very typical london setup and um in this position uh white's going to play the the most natural move and the most common move bishop d3 in the carlson game from uh, from earlier we saw bishop b5 as kind of a, a secondary option both moves very playable but bishop d3 kind of completes white's uh very standard setup in the london and from this position uh we'll go for just a few moves queen e7 and i do want to discuss a, a bit of the nuances here before we get to the tactic um in this case queen e7 has a very direct idea of uh of playing e5 and this is a common plan for black in this sort of structure where let's imagine white just ignores the threat and castles then e5 usually just equalizes for black So whenever you're playing the London and you see your opponent might be going for this e5 break in the center usually you want to look for way some way to stop it. In this case uh white play is very nice prophylactic move knight to e5. I actually want to go back I want to show one additional move cuz there's a, another tactic which just came to mind which uh I feel like would be useful for for some players. Let's imagine queen c7 is played. The same idea preparing e5. Um in this case 95 would not be playable because it would be losing a pawn uh because there would be three attackers and only two defenders. So the question for you is how does white uh how should white continue in this position? And it turns out queen c7 is a mistake because white has a very simple response. So feel free to pause the video and find the best move for white. Okay, so the best move is uh is simply to win the free pawn. d takes c5 uh because the bishop is pinned to the queen bishop cannot recapture on c5 and of course if bishop takes g3 h takes g3 white's up a happy pawn here also happy to open the h file and uh this this looks like a a great uh great position for white going forward in the middle game okay so going back to the uh the game after knight e5 uh black now plays knight d7 and very soon we'll see how black's kind of natural play is going to uh is simply going to backfire and white's going to have a, a really nice combination so white will go ahead and take on d7 black takes back most natural move bishop takes d6 it all looks pretty forcing d takes c5 queen takes c5 and this brings us to uh to the key position now if you haven't seen this position before it's probably uh probably looks a bit dry where white seems to not have much going on maybe move like castling or knight f3 seems to be the most logical but uh amazingly enough uh white has a uh basically a forced win in this position i don't want to say forced win but a forced way to get a huge advantage and if you give this position to any grandmaster they will win uh pretty smoothly as white So the best move is bishop take h7. Um and it's actually a Greek gift where white is going to apply the sort of Greek gift ideas. If you don't know what a Greek gift is, it's basically defined by sacrificing on h7 with the bishop and then getting a queen to h5 and the knight eventually to g5. And as we'll see this play out after king take h7, queen h5, king g8, knight e4. uh which is a very beautiful move taking advantage of the pin against the pawn on e5 hitting the queen white now has a double threat of obviously knight takes c5 and also knight g5 and now we can see the uh the danger for black and already it's too late black is uh is in big trouble so if uh, if you've seen this position before it's possible that you've actually seen it in another lecture I've done for the St. Louis Chess Club I showed the game uh between two pretty well-known American players uh Gadkomski had white in this posi- position against Sam Shankland Sam Shankland actually stumbled into the slime and lost uh 
pretty brutally as uh, as black. So in this uh, in this lesson, I want to show a different game. It was between M. Galias and uh, A. Jacob. I don't know if I'm saying those names correctly, but uh, looks like uh, two pretty strong players. Uh, white was rated just under 2,500. Black was rated uh, just over 2,350. And in this game, white won very, very smoothly from, uh, from this position. Just took about 10 more moves to convert the advantage. So let's see what happens after queen b5. Uh, white goes ahead, knight g5, threatening maiden one. The only defense for black is to move the rook from f8. Uh, black can play rook fd8. And now, uh, now white just starts seizing the initiative uh, even more. Queen take f7, king h8. Queen goes back to h5, king g8. Now, I do want to point out there's no uh, immediate force win from this position. White would like to play some idea like queen h7 and chase the king and win the g7 pawn. But the king can actually run to d6. And if we get to this position, we can see, okay, white could win the exchange. And then it would be some scenario where white has a rook and... Uh, and three pawns for two minor pieces, um, which should be enough to win for white. But I would say there's no reason to go for this line because white can do much better. So let's go back to this position. And if we take a look, black's king, uh, black's king is currently stuck. And at any time, white will have this resource with, uh, with queen to h7 check. So white very simply castles in this position. And it's a nice idea to put the rook on d1 to uh, to very simply get ready to control this uh, this d file, um, especially because we can, as we saw in that previous line, we we can very easily force the king to d6. So we want to optimize the rook before we go for queen h7 check. So the game continued, queen a4, hitting the a2 pawn. Uh, I really like white's next move: simply defend the pawn, king b1. White's in no rush as black has uh, has very few defensive resources here. After e5, uh, white now plays another very nice move, e4, just trying to open up the, the, uh, the d file. So if we imagine black takes on e4, white is simply mating by force after queen h7, and then the eventual queen takes g7. Now the d6 square is inaccessible because of the rook on the, the open file. And after king f7, queen f7 mates would end the game. So going back, black did not open the file. Black instead played d4. But uh, now we're going to see uh, another nice attacking idea from white. Rook d3, a simple uh, simple rook lift. Some people call it the rover, just wanting to bring the rook most likely to f3, but really uh, has some some uh, attacking potential with, uh, with these three diff different rook moves. Um, and black, we can see is is slow to attack and very slow to defend. So a few more moves were played, bishop e8, but now after queen h7, king f8, uh, white is actually mating by force. And I would encourage viewers, if you want to find the, the force mate, it's white to move, checkmate in four moves. So the mate is queen f5 check, king g8, queen e6 check, and now if uh, the king has two options, if it moves to f8, there's knight h7 mate. And if it moves to h8, there is rook h3 mate. So this is, uh, this is just a classic, uh, classic London line, which if you haven't seen before, I hope, uh, I can hope, I hope you share the joy that I have when, when going through this line. Um, going back, I think it's important to identify what did black do wrong? Cause it seemed like all of black's moves were, uh, were pretty natural. Um, and I do want to show perhaps one more variation in this line, where if you're playing black and, and you want to play this line, of course you should not not allow this eventual bishop take h7. Um, but there is one um, one sort of nuance that black can uh, can use here to attempt to equalize. Um, and from this position, after knight take d7, the best move is not bishop take d7, but rather queen take d7. And I do want to explain the difference. After queen take d7, white can reach a very similar position. Um, this is almost identical to the game, only the bishop is not on d7. The bishop is on c8. 
and white uh white can't go for the same line with the same success because after taking on h7 queen h5 king g8 knight e4 there's a really nice move here for black the uh the counterattacking move g6 and the idea with this is that if knight take queen pawn take queen there's no bishop to take on d7 um, in the other line, white would just be very happy to take on d7, and uh, I believe white would then be uh, up a pawn. But in this case, white is down a piece. So, of course, this should not be, uh, not be something white would be happy about. So going back, after g6, uh, white would be forced to bail out with a draw. The best line for white is queen g5, and then black would then move the queen, and... Keep in mind, white sacrifice the bishop. There's not a strong enough attack to uh, to finish things off. So the best white can do is go for pe perpetual check after knight f6. Um, of course, if king h8, queen h6 mate, so king g7. And then after knight h5, nothing better for either player than to accept repetition. So it's an interesting line, which I feel like not everyone knows about. Uh, there's still people falling into this trap. And um, if you're if you're a London player, definitely something to uh, to probably memorize, especially if you can get to this position after uh, after Queen e7, Knight e5. Um, I think there would be good chances for Black to walk into this line. Now, if you're White and you're you're playing for some advantage and you run into Queen take d7, uh, probably the best approach here is not to take on d6, but rather to take on c5. And play a bit more positionally, where uh, you want to go for control over the e5 square. And I think there's something to play for here. And if we notice after knight f3, white might be threatening bishop take h7, knight g5. So, um, so I won't go any further, but hopefully this gives a lot more insight in, in one of the very trendy and uh, very main lines in London. So hope you guys enjoyed that, and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.